Hello and welcome to the Monday, September 30th, 2024 edition of the Sands and it Storms on us Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, let's start out with the Linux Cups uh, print system vulnerability that we talked about on Friday. Good part here is nothing fundamentally new about this vulnerability. Uh, there is some talk that this may be exploitable even without user interaction. The user interaction here is that a user has to actually print a document on one of those fake drivers, but there is a possibility and EvilSocket also kind of confirmed this in a tweet earlier today that uh, an attacker could trigger the print and with that then trigger the code execution. Most Linux systems do not appear to be affected here. If they're affected, they're typically Linux desktops, which of course we don't see a lot of them. A lot of people suggested that printers that are running Linux may be affected. Haven't really seen any evidence that any Linux printers that of course are running cups are running the browse D part that actually is used to trigger this vulnerability. There are, of course, always possibilities of exceptions. Uh, patching is still what you should do. And definitely make sure that your printers are not exposed to the world. Same for any Linux uh, systems. You definitely do want to have a firewall that blocks ports like 631. And not just 631, but any port that you don't need open on the particular system. Many of the exploit attempts we have seen now are essentially just scanning if the vulnerability is present on a particular system. Various results of these scans are being posted uh, by you know, Shodan and others. Uh, they're all kind of uh, the same numbers where we have tens of thousands of systems that appear to have browser D running and that are requesting URLs being posted to Browserd, which should at least indicate a potential vulnerability to this particular issue. In short, stay vigilant, keep patching, and that's really all we have at this point about this vulnerability. Of course, the real challenge when we have a big event uh, that's highly publicized, like uh, the CUPS vulnerability, is uh, what else did we miss? And uh, on Friday, of course, I didn't talk about anything else. So let me uh, try to summarize uh, some of the issues here. For example, PHP released a new version and one bug that sort of stuck out here a little bit is CVE 2024-8926. It's a bypass of an earlier vulnerability. So the patch of the earlier vulnerability is being bypassed here. That's CVE 2024-4577. This is a parameter injection vulnerability that first of all, in affected Windows and was heavily exploited. So given that there is now a new variation of this vulnerability available to attack, I would expect that to be attacked fairly quickly. Other versions of PHP got updated as well, uh, sort of within uh, the supported range of versions. This one here is in particular for version 8.1, and now the latest one is 8.1.30. An asset note did publish an interesting blog post about some behavior of the uh, big Chinese uh, firewall. Now, this is not fundamentally new behavior, but something that sort of uh, keeps changing. And in this particular case, it's a DNS resolution. Apparently, the Chinese firewall has started to resolve host names that contain certain keywords to specific IP addresses. Now, what Asset Node was in particular looking at is, can they actually take that to their advantage and attack certain sites with that by basically tricking them into being directed at a particular IP address that they control by, for example, hosting their site in a CDN, in this case, Fastly, that is using this specific IP address. Interesting attack here, and uh, certainly something that's always a possible problem if you're messing with a DNS resolution like this. This like I said, isn't uh, fundamentally new and actually uh, has been used uh, 
by the Chinese firewall for denial of service attacks in the past. I'll include in the show notes an article I wrote back in 2015, so almost uh, 10 years ago, where uh, piratebay.org was uh, kind of uh, used uh, as a domain to then uh, trigger denial of service style attacks from within China. Uh, interesting behavior back then, sort of how DNS uh, was kind of used to redirect users. And then we have more critical vulnerabilities in HP Enterprises, Aruba access points. Uh, yet again, uh, the uh, Puppy protocol, that's uh, Ruba's access point management protocol, is affected here, leading to unauthenticated remote code execution by sending a message to UDP port 8211. Block that port. We had a number of critical vulnerabilities like this in this particular protocol. And uh, for some reason, I doubt these are the last ones that HP will be uh, patching. Then also just a quick note about Hurricane Helene, uh, which luckily is now winding down, uh, but left some devastating uh, destruction in areas that are not usually used to being affected by hurricanes. Uh, for example, besides Augusta has been canceled. I think it was supposed to be happening in about a week. So hope for a speedy recovery for everybody affected. If you were scheduled to take a GIAC exam or anything SANS related, have questions about uh, how this is affected uh, by Helene or if you're affected by Helene and, for example, can take an exam, please reach out to info at GIAC.org or info at SANS.org for exam related question. Proctor at GIAC.org is also a good uh, contact uh, address here. And uh, with that, uh, thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.